laptop because I'm actually going to try and use it to uh, monitor my feed today. Uh, and lately, I've been having the. Uh, <coughs> of course, it distracts me. Oh yeah, it's going to have a script error, and it's hanging things up. So yeah, it distracts me though some at the beginning, especially. <coughs> But we'll see how it works. It's kind of nice in a way because I can uh, can pull that down right now. Anyway, <clears throat> it's nice in a way because I can um, look. I can I can leave it up there and I can you know look over there without having to show you what I'm doing on here. So that's if if it'll work today. <coughs> uh, if that laptop can handle it this time. I don't know, I've forgotten. I keep I get those script errors on that page, so I thought that's why I didn't. One reason why I quit quit doing it, and the other reason was because uh, I was always having to. Look, where I keep the laptop on the on a on a well, it's a keyboard tray, really, a big heavy keyboard tray uh, on my rack. I, it slides in and out. <coughs> 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 okay, <coughs> cough number one out of the way um anyway where i had to put my working table to put the computer on it but the computer's down in the rack now the as rock that's what i'm going to be working on and let's see oh that's just the monitor and me so um go ahead and open this wasn't for sure i thought i had that set to do nothing when i when i closed the lid it didn't do anything that's good. It didn't go to sleep or anything. When it's on power, when it's on battery, it, I have it set to go to sleep. That's got a new domain system on it, that Dell 1525 laptop. And, uh, yeah, these dual, Fedora, Fedora, I love Fedora. It's my favorite operating system or Linux distro, I should say, I guess. Um, Linux is the operating system. But, uh, it, you know, as time goes by and the computers get older and the systems get a little little larger and lose a little more resources, then uh, little by little, uh, it can't really run. I tried Fedora 25, and it'll run okay until you start getting on YouTube or anything that's high demand like that. That HTML5 is good. It, uh, I think I do like it better than Flash, what they used to use for most videos, but uh, I think it uses more resources. Either that or Firefox has just gotten, and Chrome, Chrome's... I can't use Chrome anymore, but uh, I don't know if they're using HTML5 or not either, but uh, I haven't paid any attention because I hardly ever use it. But uh, I can't use Chrome on hardly anything, not even this quad-core. And uh, um, <clears throat> I can't, I, for Door 25, I couldn't really watch videos or anything. It just couldn't keep up. So Domain is a lot lighter on the resources, but it's... A little, quite a bit different in the way things work, and you have to learn, you know, have to relearn things because I haven't used it a lot in the last few years. Just older, I had some older versions of Debane on some old. It'll run. I mean, Debane five and six will run on. I've got a 350 megahertz Pentium three and a 500 megahertz Pentium three out in the garage, and that's what I have on each one. You know, the six on the 500, and vice, you know, 350 uh, megahertz has got the Debane five on it. And uh, you can, you know, search the Google and do things like that. And you can look at some, uh, like I'll look at the weather when I'm out there because I want to see what the temperature is and stuff like that. And some pages, you know, you, you can look at some you can't. It lo some of them will lock it up with a lot, the ones with a lot of flash on them or something. But uh, you know, but you have to have a little. You have to kind of those most of those pages won't work without Java and or Flash. I think Java sometimes locks them up quicker than Flash does, actually. But anyway, um, enough of the chit chat here. Um, let's see. I want to. Okay, I've already got that machine booted up, so all I really need to do is go to the desktop. Oh yeah, I'm still going to show that, aren't I? Uh, at least I don't have to say, oh, hang on, let me go look at uh, You'll still see that. And unless I had uh, dual monitors and I could stick this in another monitor, then a machine probably couldn't handle it because that would be more work for the, you know, the machine. But uh, I tried that on the laptop. It couldn't do it. But it's only a dual core with 3 gig of RAM. This is a quad core with 4 gig. And it's the only machine I got that will really steadily do all this, you know, do a desktop screencast and do... Uh, 
um, the stream with OBS Studio. So let's see what have I got here. Okay, now here is the AS Rock. Boot it up to uh, Fedora 26 with XFCE desktop. Now that makes a huge amount of difference, but like I was saying a minute ago, even with XFCE, did I even try? Pretty sure I tried XFCE. <laughs> I think I tried it. I started out with Mate to see if it could do it. Mate desktop. I, I like that that one the best. That's what I'm using on this machine here. Um, is this one on the remote desktop? And you know, you're still seeing the uh, menus from my Fedora 23 system here at the very top and very bottom. But then inside of that, inside of the in that window, <coughs> I don't want to make it full screen because sometimes it's hard to get out and work. Some, you just can't switch fast. And sometimes it's some of these apps. It's hard to get in and out. It they get they tend to want to get full hung. This one here, this uh, Team Viewer, I don't, I don't know. I haven't done it a lot. I don't, it probably wouldn't be. Some of them you have to remember the desktop key, uh, shortcut. I mean the keyboard shortcuts, and I can't remember them in every app that I use, and it gets stuck in there. So anyway, in full screen. But anyway, uh, last time I was uh, worked on this system in my last video, I added the Whisker menu right here. So it's got the full menu and search. Pretty handy. I like that. Uh, I can't put that on Mate, or I would. Um, and then you, and I go ahead and leave this in case I just want to go straight to something that I, c I know where it is. It's a little bit different layout, but it's very similar, like settings, administration. It's just laid out different. Like for instance, right here. Here's uh, System Tools, but if you want System, then you go up here, and that's what I'm used to because this is just like Genome Tune, what I s learned Linux with, starting in 2005. So I like the way it is. Um, and I want this bottom here to be just like the very bottom here. I want four to six workspaces where I can just do this really quick. And I know where it is, you know, it's like my brain knows where it is. Uh, but I haven't been able to, f I've done it before. I d I've done it lots of times and I can't remember how to get this to spread out. And then I'll take all these out of here. I, I want to put them up here, the ones that I want. I want all of these except for I don't want that one necessarily. That's pretty handy though, you know. But uh, usually I just open the file manager and go where I want to go. I usually use Crusader, and so I open that. I keep it open the whole time I'm working. And uh, I forgot to go back and listen to my test, make sure everything was okay. I hope everything is okay. Um, go back. To my live dashboard and see if I can hear. I, I tried to click on the audio so I could hear the mu intro music. It's probably it's probably went longer, or else it was silent. I don't even know. Uh, sometimes it does go silent. Anyway, I tried to click on it to hear it through the laptop. Okay, I think I heard. It. I think I heard something, even though I didn't see it unmute in the window. But I get that script error on that page, and um, it's. Uh, It doesn't. It, I didn't. Yeah, it's, it's fixing. Give me the script error. It's not responding. So I don't guess I'm going to be able to use it very well. Not not if. Yep, there it goes. So I won't be able to tell. Okay, it did unmute, but I haven't heard anything out of it. It's not very loud. I don't want it to be loud. They didn't pick up in the mic. I just wanted to be able to hear it myself. But so far, I haven't heard any audio. Now I will, do want to know <laughs> that I'm getting audio on my stream. I see the page I'm on at least, and the stream's got good health. But yeah, that listening to the audio is not working for me. I can't quickly just click on there and see what whether or not I'm you got. Usually, if my stream's good, I'm good with everything. So let's go. I'll sh I guess I am going to have to show you. <laughs> let's see history. I was on the live page, I think. Yeah. So let me go there and make sure the audio is working because you know if I always try, I always do a test and it, it just on my computer to make sure everything works, and I forgot to go back and watch it and make sure. So let me go so there and make sure the audio is working because yeah, I hear myself. Know. I won't I won't turn it up or anything. I got pages open that I was going to show. So um, yeah, that's something I want, but I, I want to figure out. But you know, I got to realize, and you know, I have another machine that has the XFCE desktop set up just the way I want it. And I noticed in there, I'll right click down here. You right click uh, somewhere on one of the panels. These are called panels, the, the 
world you, everything is there. Uh, panel and go panel preferences, and that's where you set all this stuff. And I want it to be 100%. You know, uh, like they kind of they start they have one at the bottom is all they have when you get it, and it's kind of like that. But I don't like it like that. Uh, I want it like this, but I want the I want these to be over here on and start on the left and work the way over, you know, the active applications. And then I want this gone and I want this over here to the right. And uh, I thought all you had to do is just put spacers in there and stuff. But anyway, it's not working. Of course, it, something could have changed maybe. The, but anyway, I noticed that you can, uh, oh, right there, backup and restore. So if I say backup, current configuration, uh, what else can you do? Apply, save remove, export, now import. See, now export and import. So if I went over and exported it on that other machine, let's save it while I'm thinking about it. I'll apply, save. Okay, now if I was to, yeah, there it is. Now I could export that and let's see. Oops, why am I searching? It was in the search instead of the name. What a silly thing. Let's do that. And uh, so anyway, I could go to that other machine and export it and then import it right there. And that would give me my settings the way I want them. But I don't have it running. I don't want to do that right now. So... Um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to one of the first things that needs to be done, and that is, well, here it is right here. I made an install script whenever I installed Fedora 23 <coughs> on my uh, Fedora 23 system here out of the groups. Oh, that's as much as is on there. This is not as long as I was thinking. I have another file that's really long. This is the one that I, I can tell this is, I went and looking through, uh, and I, found, I actually didn't find the other one that I saw last time I looked, but anyway. Uh, I can't remember what goes in there, but once I got my first script, my first install script, it was a yum script, yum install instead of DNF. All I had to do to turn it into a DNF script was just copy and paste this in the, at the top of the file, and then change yum to DNF right there, and then I had, and just add I added a few of my favorite apps, you know, one at a time with a space in between them, the, some that I really wanted, and as I come across more apps, you know, I would put them in there. But um, I got the group uh, install commands from uh, from an article that I'll show you in a minute, and uh, how to get and how to get them, and you can get them on any system. All the group uh, names and how to use them in the terminal with the with a simple command, and I'll show that in a minute. Uh, let's see what's this. I don't use sudo. I use yeah, first. I go uh, when you run when I run my script. I'll I'll do it in a little bit and I'll show you. But I use su, SU instead of sudo because some things get hung up. Uh, that sudo is sudo root privileges. It's not full root privileges. Uh, <coughs> and so sometimes you get hung up and can't do what you need to do. And besides that, I'm just used to doing SU. That's how I learned. So uh, let's see. Here's some other things you could do. That and, oh, and the number sign in front of it is what they call commenting it out. It'll be ignored if it has a number sign in front of it. See, I can install the whole Fedora server uh, on here, turn it into a server by doing that. So last time I installed Fedora 23 server first, and, and then I added the desktop, and it was hard to get that to work. It might have been easier. If, if I'd have known these group commands, I might have been able to do it real easy. I didn't. Well, I got it to install just fine, but it wouldn't work and I had to edit some files and stuff so the next time I think I will but there was a bunch of th it, when you use the server install you get a lot of uh, things you can pick and choose in a GUI and I liked that so I don't know I'll, next time I may try installing like Fedora 26 depends on what machine either XFCE or May desktop and then use the Fedora server group install and whatever else I think I might need in there see there's Fedora cloud server uh, there's the Plasma Workspace, that's KDE. I'm not <coughs> not going to put that on this system, the full KDE, because it couldn't run it. It's a little, uses a little, quite a bit more resources than Mate, and, uh, and it may won't run on this machine well, so I'll just leave it uh, with, uh, I already have XFCE, and here's all some of the other desktops. I think 
I was thinking I would take uh, comment out some of these, but I think I'll leave them because I'm gonna let my mom use this, but it's not going to be her machine. So there's only about two or three that I want to take out anyway. And uh, I want to go ahead and put Mate on there as a backup desktop in uh, case anything goes wrong in SFC, XFCE, I'll be able to boot in there to fix it. Uh, but uh, I won't put KDE on there like I usually do. But I do want, uh, let me see, KDN Live. I, I want my favorite file manager in there, is uh, Crusader. There it is. I think if I just install Crusader, and console is the terminal for KDE terminal. That should give me enough of the Crusader, uh, make KDE desktop to make those work. They'll generally automatically add those things. Uh, DNF or mate, uh, yum or DNF will automatically add the dependencies. So um, go, go ahead and look through these web server. So you would need that to have a web server. If you want a web server, that's what I'm going to be wanting. And then in my next other machine. But uh, here's some more groups. Audio production, which is already up there. Oh, I see. I think I copied and pasted some of those up to the top. And then later, I got another one where it's got a whole lot more stuff to get installed. And it's, uh, I finally just said, oh, well, why don't I just leave the list as it is and just comment them out or don't comment them out, you know. And, uh, yeah, there's some more authoring, publishing. Yeah, I must have. Co I did that on this one. I copied them up to the top. I might try to find that folder and see what else I got in there before I start running this. I thought this. I thought, well, this is the one I want to run. But yeah, so uh, yeah, everything I would ever need, or just about every type. And see, this way you don't have to install them one app at a time and figure it out and remember. I used to be better at remembering what I need to go together. I built up complete web server on my Fedora 14 system just by remembering stuff but not on well I've remembered in the, you know enough to find it and search for, for it in the GUI app and I mean it'll tell you what dependencies it needs but I'm sure it took forever but uh, anyway it all works just the way I needed it I've installed uh, PHP support and you know and I even in, I installed uh, SQL and all kinds of stuff on there and it was just for testing I never did use it uh, as my server but uh, yeah sound and video I think that might be up there ready that's definitely one I would want yeah it's top one of the top ones okay yeah I guess at the time I kind of remember this now at the time I I thought I would leave that list like it was, but it really just confuses me, me now. Uh, there's a Windows file server you could install. But anyway, here's the next one that I went ahead. And it's cool in this particular, this is K-Write. It's pretty cool because it, the ones that aren't, uh, you know, commented out, they have colors to even let you know. I mean, DNF stands out so you know that it's right. And then, the, you know, the other, and see that one's a virtualization. Uh, and I don't know why that's, I don't know why that has that after that. Why is that there? Virtualization. I don't really need that, that I can think of. But I do want applications for, but I, it's it's in there, but then it's commented out in parentheses. V-I-R-T-U-A-L. I don't know why that's in there twice. That must have just been the way it was. But I'm going to comment that one out because why would I want that oh because I like to run remote yeah because I like to run things and uh, I like to run virtual apps and stuff I don't still don't know why I guess maybe I just wanted to try it out but I use uh, what I use when I want to run things in a virtual operating system inside of this one is uh, Oracle VirtualBox yeah I'm going to take that out that might somehow run some stuff in the background on boot that I wouldn't want and that's the only consideration about you know having multiple desktops. Sometimes that does happen. Actually, the biggest thing is not so much what's running in the background. Well, yeah, it it is what's running in the background. It's the things that you might have to go take out of running in the background. You'd have to go in here to. Uh, I guess it's in preferences. Startup applications. You'd have to go in here and take out anything that was for the KDE desk now. There's one right there, KDE Connect Demon. I may be using that. I don't know. 
probably. It might have to do with Crusader. But yeah, see, there's things for KDE and things for Mate both in there. And sometimes, and well, for instance, if you have Genome 3 and Mate, they're both, you know, Mate is a, a, a fork of Genome 2. So Genome 2 and Genome 3 have some duplicate but different things. And of course, one of them says Mate so-and-so, like, one of the common ones would be uh, like K-Wallet uh, is for your uh, passwords and stuff. Well, there's one for, uh, there's one for Genome. There's one for Mate, I believe. Policy Kit. I'm, sure, I'm surprised that K-Wallet's actually in there to be running. I guess I just didn't bother it if it didn't give me trouble. If, if you don't have trouble, I don't try to, If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But yeah. And then that one I put in there, that's my little app that that's actually running as portable mode but I figured out how to put you can add them right here and I added it in the startup so that it will uh, not that one that one <coughs> so it will change my desktops automatically so yeah I only changed one thing then let's see robotics I don't actually know how to build robotics but I always wanted to look at those apps and mess with them I probably wouldn't use those on my on this particular system, this this uh, dual core. Even if I started using that system for something, actually, it's possible though. Later, it might be just what I'd want to use that for. Who knows? I don't know. That's not ki the kind of thing that I think stuff would run in the background. There's one. The only thing is, is when my mom is using it, I don't want necessarily to have stuff in there that's confusing for her but she really doesn't get in the applications menu i just put what she uses up here and she uses that's all she really does she doesn't really know she doesn't even remember that the applications menu is there anytime i say anything about it she just says what <laughs> engineering name is scientific that's some stuff most of that i can't use much of it a little bit myself security lab okay i'm just gonna leave it like it is that way it's not gonna hurt anything as long as it's not something running in the background. Okay, now let me look. Let's try to set save as. Let's see. Ah, Fedora 13, Lenovo i5 info. That's all I wanted to know is where is it. Okay, because I was having trouble finding it before. Not 13, 23. Fedora 22. Three, there it is. Okay, now then. Let's go by extension this time and see if we can find them quicker. That's eh, not helping. Go by name again. Okay. Here it is. Spins. I was looking at that a while ago. I have 10 of them. Maybe, that, may, I, must, maybe I edited it that many times. So which one did I end up opening? The one that doesn't have a number on it. So I would guess 10 would be the oldest one. That's why that one has less. So let's open it up and see what it is. This is just a text. Okay. So uh, this is the actual raw terminal output from when I... Uh, no, this is when I was... In, oh, this is when I was actually installing. That's what those are. Okay. And yeah, there's, there's the script. Okay, there's that script. What is, why is there? Okay, there's one. Fedora 23 spin. Spins don't install. Fedora 23 app spins groups. Oh, this one says groups and the other one doesn't. And title. Yeah, so I've got the one that says groups. Okay. And there's a Fedora 23 and apps install script, 23 things to do. That's another one I made. Let's open this one to see what. Oh, careful, you'll run it. I don't like to just right-click and run it. I like to run it in the terminal so I can get see what's happening and if there's any errors. Oh, this is a little short one with uh, just some of my hand type stuff. And so I added that into the other one. This one, you can hit view on it. This one was an article, and this was actually from uh, 24 things to do after installing Fedora. It was one of their several apps. There's like a series of those for each time Fedora comes out. And so I took 
that article saved it as a HTML and then copied it and saved it as a text. And then I commented out the instructions and then uncommented everything I wanted to happen. And that's my stuff there. And yeah, you should <coughs> best to run a update first. I should, I think I was worried that whether or not I could get that to work right in my little script here. I should be able to just put DNF update and then, yeah, I can just put it on another line. Where did it go? There it is. Let's move that to the other workspace. Yeah, that'll be that'll be helpful. And then, do I have any other? I think I just I have me a folder for yum install scripts. I need to make me a folder for DNF install scripts now because I have trouble remembering. Generally, my folders that say info are just when I ran things. Okay. So on a side note, yeah, DNF update. So what I think I'll do is copy it. I have it here. I really, I think, I guess I was afraid that it might not work right if I put it up above that, but I think it would. Oh, I thought I was going to open something in LibreOffice and it's still running. Um, <coughs> I think I can put it right there and it should be fine. And then after the update, I don't know that it's necessary, but it does make it easier to read if you put a put a, a blank comment line after it like that. Of course, it could mess up the script. Yeah, let's leave it like that. That way it'll run updates, and then it'll go down to the next line, and it'll run. And uh, you know, uh, Kickstart files are like are just about like this. And I noticed in them they don't have DNF group install, for instance, in front. They just say like DNF install or wh whatever it says, and then uh, the, everything's on a single line. And I might be able to do that with these instead of a space. But this works the way it is, and adding this should be okay. If I break it, <coughs> we'll find out. So anyway, these other things. Oh. That would install Chrome. Now the thing that I do want, I said oh because I just remembered something. You I, in one of the in this script or one of these scripts, it would automatically install. And I actually want that. Kind of want that before I do anything else. Uh, that's doing mate desktop and all that. So I don't want this whole thing. I think I have edited this at some time to do uh, like just some very basic stuff that I wanted to do. And uh, see that'll install ice uh, uh the open Java thing, which I would want. So I might just want to run now mate. Oh, see, that's the old way. They use install at mate desktop. And I don't know if that'll work or not anymore. I think I ran into that not working. I've already got the mate desktop. Since I'm not sure, I'm going to go ahead. Whoops. What did I do? Oh, I have that open in view only mode. I didn't think I was going to edit it. Okay. Uh, right click, and I want to say open with k -Rat. Now, might make it a little easier for me to see what I'm doing. This one's not getting, yeah it is, DNF is really showing up in blue. But what I'm wanting, before I forget, let me look through there. I think I'm going to go ahead and move that too. Got to move that up like I thought. Now really, you want to do your, see that would do my first updates for me without you, you know, you well, you want that to happen before you start a a long, running a long install script anyway. But even if, if you ran this the very first time, you'd get your first updates done before you did all this. Here it is, RPM Fusion. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Now, if that's the right, you know, that looks like it would work. Yep. 
Confusion. This is saying in Fedora 23. I better go look. But you want to install the RPM Fusion free repos first. And then you want the RPM Fusion. That's for the repository on 21. So I may have to go find the right one or something for 26. I better go look on the RPM Fusion site. It's not hard to, uh, I don't see the one for local install. Oh, okay. Oh, that says the release right there. Okay. Oh, that says non-free anyway. It's hard. I'm not too good at downloading from Shun. Non-free. Non free, non free. So that's just to download it. Okay. Yeah, that's just downloading it. It's pretty easy to do it. So uh, from their website, uh, either follow the commands or if I wanted to put it in the script, then I think I would uh, definitely get the commands out of their website. Either follow the commands or download the RPM and do it that way. So, uh, yeah, uh, and really, I've already done my first updates uh, on this system, so what I'd want, I could do the RPM fusion and then start all my installs. I don't think any of the ones in these scripts that I'm running are going to be in those repos, but if they are, I want, I want those, you know, to be ready to go. To enable RPM fusion repository, this is an older one. As you can see, it was Fedora 21 when this was written out. Okay, that's when that was for Fedora 21. But, yeah, here they are. In local install free, RPM Fusion 3. And I changed it to release 23. So I might all I have to do is change it to release uh, 26. But I would want to just edit this whole file to make everything make sense. So I won't do that uh, in here, in this file. So actually, this file is really not good for the new versions. <coughs> So I'm going to close it. And if I wanted to do that, all that, uh, which I think I do, actually, I'll add it right there in that space. Well, I won't do that right now because, like, I was, I was thinking that could be a problem. I don't think it would be, but what if it was a problem since I don't know exactly. Okay, so, yeah, I haven't copied it. I'll have to. See, I don't have this machine accessible to the network. Uh, network like the FTP and stuff or the SFTP but uh, my um, actually I don't know that I could get to either machine so I could probably just put it on the USB stick and pop it in over there I, I've always used to do everything that way but actually Fedora got to where you couldn't just turn it on and off easily in the uh, GUI and I got tired of messing with it, and it to get to get your SFTP up and working so um, I was looking at my stream. I still can tell you, though. I don't have to show you, but I can tell you. Uh-oh, I think that screw up blocked everything up. You know, I'm going to try leaving it on there on this one and see. Last time I did that, though, that script error kept coming up. When I first got on there, before I started my stream, I didn't see the script error. There it is. Okay, yeah, every time. I guess that's why I hadn't been doing that. I'd forgotten about that. Every time I get on there, I get the script error, and then I got to fiddle with that. That bugs me worse than showing it to everybody what I'm doing. Okay. Um, so, now let me show you the article. Uh, since I, I, I won't get off on that RPM fusion right now. Now, here's one script. I'll go ahead and show this, and I can close this page. And here's one of the ways they show you to do it. This is on the Fedora, askfedora.org. Uh, they're telling you uh, how would one choose optional packages and group install. And I guess this is just an example. Uh, sudo yum group install network servers. And this is the yum instead of the uh, DNF install. So, And then it shows you what. Well, here's a bunch of optional packages. I don't know what else in there. But since we're not going to be dealing with uh, my, I saw something moving on my laptop, and it's what I'm doing right now. <coughs> it's silent, but... <laughs> Okay, well, so far, so good. Maybe I'll leave it like that unless it distracts me. 
Now, I did a search, and I didn't even go look at any of the links yet because uh, I found the ones I had been following. But that was, see, this was written in October 6, 2015, and this is 17. It's not super old, but um, now here's how you find the list. This is how you get the list. So this is a really good article, even though it's older. And I believe it still works. And you might, there might be some others, you know. This guy might have made a new one. Uh, I don't know. But uh, anyway, I can't even, I can't hardly read that. I can't, it's a funny word, blue something. If you can uh, either just do a Google search for door 26 group install or, you know, you can write this down up here and go to this exact page. But it says use sudo, but I'm just going to use, I'm just going to, get in the terminal over there and I believe I'll be able to yeah that's I think that's too distracting for me all that moving around over there I keep making me look away from my work here okay so uh, we do want to do DNF uh, I mean not DNF yeah before we get it back into the group install I will take a sidetrack and do uh, RPM fusion yeah let's just change this search if I needed it, it's in my favorites. There we go. It asked me how I want to do it, but there it is. RPM fusion configuration. That should be it. There we go. Yeah, 24, 25, 26. Uh, so I'm just going to put it right there in my Fedora 26 folder that's up there. Okay, uh, graphical setup. And uh, I'll close one of those windows. Doing pretty good on my system resources, though. That's good. Okay, so 26, if we want to... I used to always do it this way. Oh, it just, it's just going straight to the download. Now... If I'm going to download something, you, you know, this has got a good reputation, but I would use my add-in here to scan with virus total. And uh, which one did I click on? This is the free repository. Okay, and this is the non-free. I always install the free first and then the non-free. So I'll just go ahead and download them. Maybe I'll show it this way because it really is uh, an easy way to do it. Uh, this, this command would allow me to put it into my script, but that's the free one. So and it came up clean. If you're not familiar with this add-in, uh, virus total add-in, it scans uh, all these these scanners, online scanners, scan your file, uh, 65 of them, and tell you what you know whether or not it came up clean or not. And I I, pr I pretty much don't use them if they don't have zero out of 65. Sometimes it's 61 or something scanners, but if you kind of know, like some files, especially with Windows, if you know that what that uh, software does could be false positive, then you might, you know, if there's one or two, you might, it's up to you, you know. But anyway, uh, I want to say open link. That'll open it right there on that page, and now I'm going to save that file. Okay, so I can close that page. This one's clean too, and that is the non free. And what it means is it doesn't cost any money if you're not familiar with that. What they mean is free as in open source freedom, as in uh, completely free to edit, you know, re, uh, reprogram, uh, what am I trying to say, uh, edit the code any way you want. That's what they're talking about, that kind of freedom. And so some of it is a, under a proprietary or maybe a not completely open source license. And uh, that's what they mean between free and non-free. Okay, now, here we go. Here is the door 22 and later. So here's the command, the whole thing. They'll put it in there. Now, I think I'm going to do that. Oh, see, so I'm going to already SU in there. If you already, uh, what will happen is if you've already typed SU, at the, you know, to get root privileges, if you add that sudo command, it will... Uh, most of the, when you freshly install a Fedora system, you're not going to have a pseudo group. You're not you're not going to be in the pseudo group users, and it's a pain to get it set up. That's the other reason why I don't do that. So don't use that pseudo part, and you'll be fine. So all I got to do 
is add that to my script and it'll do that. So now I'm thinking, well, why do I want to? <laughs> so I'm just going to copy and paste that in there and it should be ready to go. And eh, leave it like that. And uh, I know that worked, so. Only thing that makes me kind of wonder is in these, uh, let's see, let's change the view to, show non printable spaces, show word count. Oh, there it is, word wrap. We'll turn off the word wrap. Okay. We want to make sure, yeah, it looks good. You see now that I turned on word wrap, there are no there's no returns in there. And in, in that line that I just copy and paste since I copy and pasted it, we'll know, you know, whether there's any returns in there. And you cannot have returns in your lines. You just can only have spaces. And uh, I don't think you even want a space at the end of the last one. Well there's a space on that one, I've never had any trouble with it. It might be better that there is a space, actually now that I think about it. Um, since I know that script been working, now watch me be wrong, I'm going to go ahead and put a space there. Because you do need a space between each. Uh, you do when they're all on the same line. Now, when they're on separate lines, I don't think you do. Let's look at this other one and see. Well, there's one there. Well, there's not one there. Okay, so it doesn't seem to matter either way because I don't believe this was a broken script. So um, that should be good enough. Okay, now, um, I don't know. I kind of kind of want to show both ways, but I'm not sure. Uh, well, since this is all about install scripts, I won't do the uh, GUI installation, even though I downloaded those. Um, but that's how you do it, and then you would just uh, let me go to my downloads folder here. Oops. Sometimes I don't type the right thing. I have two download folders now. Okay, so here they are right there. Whoops. And uh, that non-free is the second one I downloaded, so it's the newest. But you would just say right-click, uh, open with app or installer. Now, that's something that I ran into with Fedora. And it goes back and forth between Fedora 23, 25, 26. I don't know what would happen, actually. I might have to install Apper first before I could get it to work. It, it actually depends on something about how the RPMs were made. Sometimes you can use a Yumex package installer, and sometimes you end up having to use Apper. That's why I have Apper, which is the old package installer. And in this system, I don't have, you don't see a DNF. You're going to see only DNF in tw no, Fedora 26. I'll show that in a minute, I guess. Yeah, I'll put these on my... <coughs> My little SD card has got space for doing things like that. Oh, I've got my little camera plugged in. That's all right. I'll just unplug it. Okay, now, uh, I plugged in my little camera. And, uh, I mean, I unplugged my little close-up camera, my endoscope. Now, there it is. Okay, now my files, download, I'll put those in there. Copy them over. Might end up needing them. Now, um, documents. I'll just put it straight in that documents folder. Let's get back in that other folder that I was in a minute ago. Yeah. Okay, install script. I'll copy them both over there. Yeah, I might change my mind. I want to edit that or use it for at, at some other point. I might. Okay. There we go. I didn't know I didn't have those on there. So now, um, I think I'm done editing that. So we'll close it. I'm going to leave that open in case I need it again. Yeah, this article, um, I didn't, I'll run that command just to show. If, uh, I might start, the script takes an hour or two to run when you got a bunch of stuff like that. But I do want to go through this and uh, 
thinking this is, if I'm going to show it, I'm going to need a way to show it. This, this article has got uh, all the information in um, examples. Let's see. Well, I can, oh, I can just keep showing it from right here because I'm doing remote desktop. Okay, so. Um, and I should be able to copy and paste between, you know, between machines too. Okay, so. Um, click my live dashboard over there and kind of check it out on the. Oh, okay, now let's get this out of here. Okay, everything still looks good on my video now. I want to right click and unmount my SD card. Put it down there in that other machine. Now it should be bounded up in the Fedora 26 machine. <coughs> well, it is easy to use the uh, laptop to uh, to see what I'm showing and everything. Okay, now, let's get over here. <coughs> and uh, we'll go ahead. I don't have any of my apps, you know, my favorite apps installed. So I don't have Crusader or any of that stuff. And that's going to be installed. So I'll use, I'll use this, what, that terminal that came with it. It's fine. Uh, I don't remember which one it is. Let's see. This is XSCE terminal. It'll be fine. Now I'm going to SU. Then I'm going to do, um, got to do the root password. <coughs> and uh, boy, my what's playing on my laptop is behind what I'm doing by quite a bit right now. But uh, <coughs> yeah, I can hear that laptop picking up. It's starting to heat up, <coughs> so I'll get off of that page again. Okay, now I, I did type in my root password right now. I should be able to right-click and say paste DNF group install list. And that's how I got my list. After running these commands, I copied and pasted this into text files, or open office, I think, and then saved them as text files, and then I turned them into that script. And all you have to do to make a, once you've made your script, just uh, change the file extension to .sh instead of uh, text and don't use you, you don't want to do that with an open office file or something you want to use a plain text file but here is all of the groups available in uh, Fedora 26 and so actually you might you know I might they could be different uh, I might end up having to redo my script uh, so I better look this over a little bit As a matter of fact I'm going to save this for future reference Custom operating system. Okay, available environment groups. Uh, minimal install, server. Yeah, this is uh, oh, a custom operating system group. Okay, workstation, cloud server. So you could turn any basic install of Fedora into, and then there's the desktops. There's one Hawaii desktop that I don't, don't never try it out, I don't think. Uh, and web server. There may be less uh, groups available than there used to be because I don't see some things that I just was kind of looked over a while ago. Uh, administration tools are very useful, and then here's printing and all these things. Um, audio production, authoring and publishing, CC development tools, cloud infrastructure. takes quite a while to set up your, your script. That's why I didn't really want to do it again. Uh, and didn't want to do any headless management, like if you had a server and you want to be able to manage it. I don't put that on my server because I'm afraid somebody will figure out how to hack into it and get into my server. But uh, it could be very useful. And, you know, if you, well, if your server wasn't connected to the Internet, it was just a local, you know, you wouldn't have to worry then so much. But hardly anything is not connected to the Internet in one directly or indirectly. But my server is a web server, so. I did not install that on purpose, but uh, 
made applications, made compiz. Now those made applications can be useful even if you're using XFCE and, and the other way around. Like I use that app XFCE app founder right there in my mate desktop all every day, all day. You know, there's LibreOffice just as a group. And uh, but the way I was going to do it is the Office group will put it in there. And let's see. So yeah, text-based internet. Oh, those can be useful sometimes. Uh, text text-based web browsers. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy what I got here. Let's just do edit, select all, edit, copy. Now, one thing I like about the uh, the KDE's terminal, uh, already forgot what it's called. Uh, it's in my file. I closed my file. It uh, will allow you to. Oh, I opened that up in the same desktop. I always like to be in the different desktop. Let's move it to the first desktop. Or workspace. Now I'll open up uh, edit. Let's see. Leaf pads all right. That's fine and dandy. I don't think K uh, it's the KDE text editor. Now I'm going to control V. You can't control V in the terminal. Uh, I don't. One time I, I set up a terminal, you know, custom at custom commands, and it ended up uh, to where I couldn't do control V in there, but then it ended up conflicting with other things. So um, I'm going to copy that so I can use that as the file name. Save as. Documents right now. I'm just going to put it in documents. I don't have a special any special folders in here, but I'm going to make it txt to make sure dot txt to make sure it's the right file name. Now that's still a terminal window, <laughs> and it'll stop being white when I click down here somewhere. I think it turned white when I selected it all, didn't it? No, it was blue. Oh, maybe this one's white. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't realize that. Yeah, there was a space in there too. Okay, you don't want a space before you start typing. <coughs> now, that's the groups. Now let's see what else he has in here. I'll I'll do this in order to make it go faster. I'll skip on down. Uh, but available environmental groups, that's pretty much the same. And then available groups, 3D printing. Yeah, there seems to be some missing groups. Uh, Sound Lab oh, may not be there anymore. That's one I really like. Sound and video. Oh, oh, security lab. Okay. Well, anyway, we'll see what happens. And then uh, group info. Okay, now here's some, here's one. Group info genome. Oh, genome. Oh, this gives you the info on a particular group, and it'll tell you uh, what. I'm just going to do it, and it'll tell you what apps are in that group is what it does. I could do it with something else like could do group info. Let's do group info of uh, some other group, something that I'm actually going to install. I don't, genome would be genome 3 at this point, so yeah. Why doesn't genome? I, I'm not going to. Th this is interesting reading, but it may have all changed uh, right here. So uh, let's just run the basic commands and. Uh, yeah, control. Oh, it worked. I did control V in that terminal and it worked. How cool is that? I did it. I started to do it and I thought, well, try it and see. And I, I thought, no, you can't do that. <laughs> but you can in this one. And that's through remote desktop, too. So it should always work on this one. Okay, now what I want to know is. Uh, yeah, those are desktops and stuff like that. What I want to know is, is about the office. I want to know what's in the office one. Office Pro, oh, that's a forward slash in there. I would not think that would work. I thought that would make things go crazy. Okay, let's see. Okay, now let's see what the information is. Python Classroom. Oh, how cool is that? Because usually a forward slash is a switch, you know. <coughs> um, 
but I think it's still working. I don't think it's messed up. It's just blinking cursor down there, but I think it'll come up with all that information in a minute. Uh, let me look back at those commands. Well, I went way down here. <coughs> so, uh, yeah. Group info. It shouldn't matter what group you put in there. It looks as though it's... Now, if it was done, you would see the root at ASRock. Dawn. Dawn. Yeah, it's not done. It's still working. I guess it's just a lot of information. I wouldn't think that, you know, since I ran the command about the available groups, that that uh, forward slash in there would actually cause any trouble. But, uh, like I was saying, that I was surprised to see it in there. But, uh, trying to check my live feed while that's working. Uh, I'm going to have to wait on that now. I could always open up another terminal to do other things, but. Um, I'll go back. Okay. Uh. Oh, it says that, yeah, that's the heading of this. Unfortunately, you won't find an obvious group for your needs. Uh, so your group genome. And so group genome, and this is, you know, all the stuff that's in it. And uh, then why doesn't the genome group show up in our list? It looked to me like it did. I guess if I'd paid more attention, I'd understand. I think I had to read that a couple times last time. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> he says this must be an attempt to uh, better the user experience. It seems for doors repositories, only a few totally awesome hidden groups. Okay, so, oh, okay, DNF group list be hidden. Well, why didn't you say that to start with? <laughs> All right. No, I have to, that may. I wonder if that's why it didn't work the way I expected. Must be. Now look at all the ones that. That's why I had that one that was really really long. Okay, so let's go back up here and we'll do this again. Maybe I'm actually demonstrating exactly what happens. It's just sitting there. So you know what? I'll leave that terminal as it is. It shouldn't hurt anything. Even me hitting enter probably won't hurt anything. What if I got there? Oh, I did that in LeafPad. Anybody notice that? Anybody laughing at me? Or saying, you it screaming at the screen going, you idiot. <laughs> okay, now I understand. Okay, so uh, let's just edit this little thing. Next try. I think I'll nah, leave it like it is. Okay, and then I could try a different group. This time I'll try a different group. For instance, we'll do Liberty Office, I guess. Yeah, see what's in the Liberty Office group. It's probably not hidden, though. Maybe we should do Genome, like he said, or Mate. Now let's do Genome, like he said. Oh, group be hidden. That's you. Okay, let's do it exactly that way. Now I understand. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, edit my little script or my little text file so that I can copy and paste those. Okay, now go back to the article again so I'll be a little ahead of the curve here, ahead of the learning curve a little bit. And uh, I still have my window open over there. And kind of hear that okay I hear my voice so everything's good okay and then he says the V option causes the output to include the parenthetical references to groups group IDs which also indicates oh, I'm not going to go read all that but man that's crazy so and he explains it all okay so yeah 
And then DNF group info workstation productivity environment. Okay, now that's the next thing I want to do. Let's just see what would that would bring. We'll try running that in a little bit. Okay, so that's the end there of that article. I keep wanting to put a comment in front of that, comment those out. Whoops. Dollar sign would do something different. That will make sense if I ever decide to turn that into a script. It would run them, but it wouldn't get hung up on the uh, other part. All right, now, so that actually turned out to be a happy mistake. I will just go over here to the terminal now, and I will, well, control, oh, control B worked in <laughs> LeafPad, of course, so I was right. I was wrong and I was right all at the same time. You got to do right click, paste in the terminal, like I said. All right, there we go. Now we get it right quick. Okay. So here is all of everything. See how LibreOffice is going to be put in there. All the ones, Calc, Draw, everything, plus these others. Some good apps, too. And there's some apps I never knew about that I got on my Fedora 23 system that after all these years, I didn't even know about them, but they got installed with this group. It's a pretty darn cool app. So that's one thing cool about using these groups is they're only going, and Fedora's going to include apps they know are good, useful, and work really well in their groups so it's a cool thing to use now uh, back to my leaf pad it, I get confused because see I expect my I expect to be over here and when I go over here I'm like hmm where's my, even though I know I, you know it's hard for, it's hard enough to remember you're working in a remote desktop but when your windows are in the wrong place then it makes it even harder it gets tricky when you get old you can't think you can't think that good Okay, so um, now we'll go in here and paste the next one. V hidden. Okay, now what do we got? I think I'm going to end up trying to resave all this new stuff in there. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah, so. I don't know. I saw another. The last time I was looking for my script, I think I saw the one I might have built after doing all this or something. I'm not sure. I saw one that was super long, I swear. Uh, uh, an install script. Maybe it wasn't a script. Maybe it was just a text file and I didn't see it today. But I don't need an extra long one for this system build, anyways. So looks like I got pretty much what I need in the script that I'm planning on running. And I'm actually kind of doing it backwards from what I had planned. I said that earlier. I should have started that install running, and I could be didn't showing and talking about this the whole time. It was running. Well, I got to thinking maybe, oh, yeah, I remember. I thought, oh, it could be different. I might not want to run it. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. But I think that other one will be all right. Uh, it's already edited, and if there are a few of those groups that aren't around anymore, it won't be Office or anything important like that. It might be something that I don't necessarily need on there anyway. And these are all groups. These are not separate apps. So look at all that. That's a lot of cool groups. And there may be stuff you want in there. Now see, here's a bunch of language groups that you might want. Now, I wouldn't want any of that. All I, ha I English is what it's built in, and that's all I know. But uh, other people may. Okay, now let's see what this one is. Oops. It is a bit different. Uh, it is a bit different. You know, things sometimes slow down a little bit on the remote desktop. Okay. Act a little funny. The mouse feels like it's spongy or rubbery in its response. Okay, that's short. Oh, I was trying to save that. Uh, let's see. Workstation product environment. Okay, environment group, Fedora workstation. Okay, so common network manager modules, core, workstation product, fonts, genome, guest desktop, 
hardware support, LibreOffice, multimedia, printing, X space. It almost looks like a pretty good ARM tools. Well, I don't probably don't need any ARM tools on that system. It would be cool to mess. It might be something to help you work with your phones or your Raspberry Pi. Probably your Raspberry Pi because you can't really do much on your phones plugging them into the computer. I mean, you can transfer databases and stuff. But at least that I know how to do. Um, okay. So, what I'm thinking now, go to the top, find that, find where I changed to those other commands. Didn't go to the top, did it? Okay. Uh, these are the first little short group of groups. DNF, office and productivity. Okay. Window manager is confused. Okay, yeah, here we go. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is get... Actually, that's going to be really hard to do. That's such a long thing. I did, and well, that's good. This terminal didn't cut me off. Some of them will cut you off after a lot less lines than that. And then you can't do what I'm doing right now. I'm going to put a comment line to help me tell where I'm at. I'm just going to save it like that for now. What I was thinking is... Oh, I could do this. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm going to take out that first run and just leave all that together. Put those commands at the top, those little instructions. There we go. Hopefully that makes sense to me later. Okay, so that's a good thing to have. Yeah. Okay, so I think I will shut that because that's not what I'm going to run. And I'm going to start a new terminal window because I want my <coughs> script running to... Well, i got to open it in another way. Now, well, here's what I'm going to do. Open it back up. I'm going to get my root privileges back again. And I'm going to type Thunar, the file manager. And it's open up Thunar with root privileges. Now, I want to use Thunar because I can go over here to my... Um, I plugged that in, didn't I? I don't see my... Um, SD card that I put in there. File system, boot home. May have to, let's just open it up in here. It may need to get, there it is. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe it was still trying to be mounted by Thunar. Oh, there it is. Okay, now let's see if I can get in there and see if it'll show up. Uh, is there a refresh? Yeah, there we go. I don't see it in Thunar, but you, uh, hmm. Let's see if we can go to, I don't think it'll be in Mount. Let's see. No, this is Fedora. Let's see. Ah, uh, where is it? In Fedora. I always forget. Okay, so if I was going to my 4.5 terabyte drive, it would be in Run Media Dawn. Okay. Let's go to downloads. That's good enough. Okay. So we need to go to run media. Where's run? Go to file system. Okay. Let's see. We can go anywhere we need to in Thunar. Be careful. Don't delete anything. Media. Dawn. There it is. There. Okay. I don't know why it didn't show up in the side. That's really not any fun whatsoever. Uh, probably just probably some settings I could change in there that make it do that, but I'm where I need to be now. Oh, okay. So that's the downloads folder. But what I want is the documents with that script I saved. 
but I do need to change that view to where I can read it. Read it. Detailed list. Okay, now it looks like it's, oh, there's an SH file right there. So yeah, I'll start, I'll say I'm gonna have to change it to show hidden files, but no, those aren't gonna be hidden. Okay, so uh, there's my script. Now what I wanna do is go to properties, get that, get that name, the whole name. Now I wanna right, make sure you click off into the white space or whatever you do, and so that you can, when you right click, you can say open terminal here. And I like to have them full. Now I got, this is another terminal, so I gotta authenticate again. As root. Whoa. No, I don't have to authenticate again. Close that, try it again. Was not paying attention. You didn't see that, did you? Since I'm already authenticated, I don't have to. So I was just typing without looking. So, uh, um, now I'm gonna type dot forward slash paste. Now there's my script. Now I'm gonna hit. Uh, I didn't think about it being on that SD card. I should have. I really meant to copy it over. No such file or directory. Let's go ahead and do what I should have done in the first place. I want to copy this over. I don't actually want to copy it as root. I want to copy it as a regular user. Let's go to downloads right here. And no, not downloads. Um, documents. Now then. like I don't see it in this one <laughs> don't see any yeah so this one doesn't want to show you that didn't help oh that's home on try the right place there we go documents okay now there we go I want to copy both of those scripts that's all I think I need yeah. There's the apps, the um, apps list from the Fedora, Fedora 15. That's an old one. Okay, now then. I will probably have to just say copy and then go to, go to home documents. <coughs> I'm going to make a folder there so that I won't. Just like I said. <clears throat> Do it that way. There we go. You can do open terminal here in this one. This is not. Oh, this one uses do not. This is do not. That's the default for the XFCE. So, but I still needed to do it the way I did it to have root privileges. So I just need to get in the right folder now. Where I think that just didn't run because uh, because let me copy it again because of where it was. And besides, I might want to take that uh, go to properties again. I guess I'll make sure I got the whole script. Yeah, that's that was my problem. Check it all back. It did not. I could tell that dot sh was not in the blue. So now it is copy. I think that was my only problem. But actually, I'm glad that uh, I didn't get it started and get. I didn't want that. Uh, I want to be able to take that SD card out. Okay, open terminal here. Okay, yeah. Now. I'm <coughs> I've already got room privileges in another terminal right now, so it turned out okay. And, uh, whoops, now you can see them both. Uh, well, this is the one I want to work in. So, right click, paste. Whoops, I forgot to do the, got to do dot forward slash, and that tells it to run that script. 
you you cut logically if you know a few commands you might think well you type run space so and so but that's not how you do it when you want to run something okay did i get a i'm still getting that problem didn't open a terminal here let's see i'm in dawn documents open terminal here it's not open in terminal here like it should there we go now it is i don't know what i did to myself okay it's in the right terminal what i mean the right folder permission to not okay so i was thinking about that for a minute there and i thought maybe i got permission problems but i do but not yet not until I don't know how I ended up in the wrong folder, but I need to get back to the one where I have it. Okay, yeah, this is the one, the yellow. See, that lets you know you're in the... you got to right-click on it. That's one of the reasons why you want to do it as much as you can in the GUI so it's easier to do stuff. Permissions allow the file to be run as a program. Since I it's got those permissions already, but it didn't... When I copied it over to this system... It lost those permissions. It gave it just the standard permissions. For, I'm going to do it to both of them while I'm at it. Just the standard permissions while you're, uh, you know, for the user DOM. Okay, so now. Why did I still see a no such file or directory? It's in the right one. Groups install SX script groups install. Bin bash. Oh, bent no such file or directory. I may have my, but it worked. I may have something wrong in my script. Maybe it's changed from yum to DNF, but it still works. But it says bin bash no such file or directory, but it still works. So I don't know about that. I'm not a I'm not a script writer at all. I just learned the very basics to do that. Okay, so this is the first thing it's going to do is the update and there are some updates see a few updates there 13 packages do you want to do the updates and this is not um well at this point it's going to be interactive uh, when it gets to the yum why i didn't mention that but yum why install means it'll just say yes to everything so uh and i think that even includes everything below that let's see while well, these updates are Let's, they're going to be short, so let's just watch it first for a minute here. Uh, I'll go back and show you what, what command I'm talking about. But this is going to be pretty fast, so I thought a pretty good way to show the update process. And, you know, the first update's about, you know, 300 megabytes plus, eight 400 megabytes. So um, I watched it take longer than I thought. <coughs> But uh, this, <clears throat> even if you sat here with all these apps, well, you wouldn't want to answer every single one of them. That would take forever. But yeah, you do not want to have to answer yes and no to the whole th script. <coughs> so you want Y install. <coughs> and. Uh, I think that's just about yeah 11 of 27 i'm checking my thing while i'm at it my screen okay 19 minutes i heard myself talking so it's all good <coughs> oh it's taking a little longer than i thought it would oh 14 of 27 okay let me see where is that script i don't think i had it open though did i okay uh i can open that file over here Here it is right here. I'll just hit the view button in here. That way it won't be right up there at the top. <coughs> um, oh, yeah, I forgot I did the RPM Fusion at the top. So it's going to be doing that. So that's part of what it was doing, I guess. Oh, no, it's still doing the updates first. So then it'll do the RPM Fusion. And see right there it says a DNF, Y, uh, space, 
dash Y space install, and then it goes into my installs. Now, all of these are going to get the yes answer, so you won't have to answer that anymore. And I could have done that up higher, but actually with the RPM Fusion, I'm, you might not want to do that. You want, you want to know what's going on there. So if there's anything that's, you know, was out of the ordinary that you weren't expecting, and since this is the first time I've actually run this script like this, got back just in time, I would want to know that. But yeah, it's okay now. It's got them all downloaded. Upgrade Firefox, uh, Lib Wacom, MariaDB. Oh, it's got MariaDB, which is the open source SQL database type thing. Type thing. It's not an SQL database, it's a MariaDB. Uh, SE Linux policy targeted. And then, okay. Oh, and we did, it did go ahead and it's already done the RPM fusion, free and non free. Oh, there it is. That's what it's asking me about. So I'm going to say, do I want to do that? Yes, I do. So, yeah, I would prefer to do that to make sure everything is okay with all that before you get into this script that's going to take, <coughs> you know, hour or two hours to run. And while it's running, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll probably just stop the video and take a break. I'm getting to where I need one anyway, so. Voice is getting a little hoarse already. <coughs> but, uh. Okay, yeah, the RPM Fusion is installing. I like that. That's really, really nice. Even, you know, that's even easier than running the uh, the RPM files. Th that's easy to do. Well, it used to be easier. It used to be less problematic, but you do come up with errors sometimes. And uh, I think all that right there is all that junk, that, all those names that jumped up like that. I think that's the rest of the script. It just went right through it. And listed what it's going to do because that's not part of RPM Fusion. So let's get on back down here to. It's going pretty fast. That's part of RPM Fusion. Okay, and that's not okay. Now it's already since I did my install, it is already into installing Cheese Clam AV, Vinegary. The uh, that's the remote desktop app. I'm seeing them. They're going by so fast. Now it's into the the groups. That was my those ones I was naming off. I wanted to hear him do that. But I saw them. I know I can't read all that that fast. <coughs> I just saw the first three letters and knew what it was saying. I thought I knew. So now it's into the group installs, all these dependencies and everything to install everything in those group lists. And there's going to be 243 of them, looks like, over here. Oh, no. I think there may be. Is that working? 229. Okay, there's going to be more. Uh, it says 384 over there. Oh, that's something else. I don't know how many there's going to be. But, uh, <coughs> well, right now it's doing 243. Okay. That was done successfully. I think it was just downloaded, though. I think now it's actually, yeah, running that transaction check. It's getting ready to actually install them. So it did download 243 apps, RPM files, and now it's installing. What's this take like 20 minutes? Be cool. But uh, this is just, you know, I, I, I don't work in the command line a whole lot compared to a lot of Linux people. But uh, when there's something like this, oh, yeah, I'll be happy to. But, see, I'm not, I'm not working in the command line so much. I'm just... Learn how to make a simple script and then type dot forward slash script name, <laughs> enter. <laughs> and here we go. And then watch it and answer yes or no. Of course, you're going to say yes to th what, what I'm doing here. So if you're doing some sort of app that's not in the repos, uh, then you may have to read those things and say yes or no. It might ask you something like, for instance, one time I did force install of a proprietary uh, video card driver. And it warned me, you'll not be, you're, you know, you can't reverse this. I didn't understand the way they languaged it, that you can never uninstall it. It's still on my old Fedora 14 system, my old blue FIC, or it was. I think I finally reformatted that system. I couldn't get it out of there. And uh, it didn't work right, and I couldn't get it out of it. And it, I had to find a way to work around it by telling the system to use, a, you know, the regular open source driver. But, uh, yeah, so, you, you know, if you're installing some package, especially if you compiled something, 
and you need to read those messages and running it in the command line like that, then uh, you need to read those messages and answer them. Uh, and if you don't know, you might want to go find out because <laughs> you could really screw up. <clears throat> you, 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 I'm always one that wants to shoot from the hip, you know, and wing it. And uh, sometimes you don't really want to do that. <laughs> it works okay sometimes, but not all the time. But that's going pretty darn fast, but it's at 44 of 243. And so on. So, uh, there's probably, I'm trying to think how I can work this. I guess this is a perfect time for me to take a break. And I thought for a second, well, I'll just let it run. I did that once before because I was only gone five minutes. But I don't see much sense in letting this run because this is going to take longer than five minutes. This is the kind of deal where you let it run. Going pretty fast, but it's kind of deal where you let it run and then come back and show the results. So that's what I'll do. <clears throat> Take a break while this is installing, and then uh, I'll come back, you know, show the results and, and go from there with everything. Um, yeah, sounds like a good idea, especially since I already know that my. Um, oops, I was trying to check my stream before I go. I know that my, uh, and yeah, that was the end of that article. <coughs> this is a great article, though. Uh, still very helpful, even though it's written in 2015. The RPM Fusion repos, oh, that was so simple to put that in my script. So, you know, that was actually what is a lot simpler to automate that than to do. Even, even running those two RPM files is easy as long as you're set up to install from RPMs on your system. And that's something you got to do a few tricks, too, now to get it to work. Or you did in Fedora 23, so I'm pretty sure you will in Fedora 26. Maybe not. Uh, but for instance, Team Viewer didn't work in Fedora 25, 64-bit. It would work in 32-bit but not 64-bit. Well, it worked perfect with no problems in Fedora 26, 64-bit. So, you know, maybe things are better. I hear myself. Uh, things might have already been improved. Um <coughs> in that area so uh, let's see let's go back see where we're at yeah see we're around halfway there I guess so I'm gonna go take my little break it might not be that long of a break and uh, then I'll come back all right it's done I'll see you later mm -hmm.